I love FromSoft. They are an absolutely legendary developer that literally single-handedly birthed an entire genre. First, there was nothing, and then suddenly an explosion of souls like spread throughout the video game industry like the goddamn Big Bang. And recently, it seems like FromSoft really just can't miss releasing banger after banger. So. Let's go ahead and rank them. Hello y'all, I'm Troy, and yes, I love Souls-like games, or Soulsborn, or whatever you wanna call them. I just played and beat Bloodborne for the first time. Shocking, I know, as I had never owned a PlayStation until now. All right. <sighs> That's that. I easily have hundreds of hours across all their titles, so this really got me thinking. Which one of FromSoft's titles do I think is the best? Which ones are not as good, relatively speaking? I want to stress as well that this is just my opinion, my own personal enjoyment with these games, and I'm relatively casual. I know I just said I have hundreds of hours, but relative. Think of this as just your casual normie player's opinion, not a professional Souls player or YouTuber. I play a lot of different games, and Souls-like take up a decent chunk. There are definitely YouTubers and players out there that just live and breathe Souls-like games, and their tier list will probably look a bit different. But everyone is entitled to their own opinions, and this is just meant to be fun and celebrate our love for FromSoft and the genre. Anyways, we do have Shadow of the Earth Tree coming out later this year, which I am extremely excited about. So I thought it would just be fun to get my opinion out there and start a conversation. Before we jump in, if you enjoy this video or my content, please do not be shy and like and subscribe. I make all types of gaming content and I will be covering more Souls-like stuff, including Shadow of the Earth Tree. So come on in and join the fun. Also, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Let me know what are your thoughts on the tier list and from Soft's games. Which one is your favorite? Am I an absolute buffoon who can never get good or do you agree with me? All right, first I wanna go ahead and lay down the rules for this here tier list, starting with the games that we are considering. I will be doing all of FromSoft Souls-like releases, starting with the OG Demon Souls up until now. And just for fun, I also want to throw in a special guest with Lies of P, which is not a FromSoft game, but damn, does it have the quality of one, almost to a fault. So that'll be interesting to see where that one lands. Now we'll go ahead and go in chronological order of the game release, just to keep you on your toes. And as for the ranking themselves, I will mostly be basing this upon my personal experience and enjoyment when I played it, but I will definitely also consider the legacy of the game, such as any mechanics it has done really well or passed down on to later games. And I also need to address the tier list itself because we are going to skew it a bit. If we were considering all Souls-like games outside of just FromSoft, almost all of these titles would be S tier. So in order to have it level out a bit, we're going to get a bit more granular. So when ranking these, it will be relative to FromSoft's extremely high standards and quality of games. I'll explain what I mean a bit better by breaking down each tier. So in S tier, this is a masterpiece. Not only is it the pinnacle of Soulsborne experience, but games in S tier will need to evolve or advance the genre in a very significant way only a masterwork of art could. Now there could be a few minor flaws, but they are nothing that is crucial to making a good Soulsborne game. In A tier, we have excellent. Games in A tier will be a near perfect Soulsborne game. These games are so good at what they do, but perhaps did not quite push or bend the genre as much as a game in S tier would have or have something else holding them back. In B tier, we have great. These games are still very good, but perhaps there were just a few things that just fell a bit flat for me or just something I didn't particularly mesh with. In C tier, we have decent. These games were kind of good, but there were definitely a few things that I didn't like. For me, there's no real reason to play these games over any of the other ones because the competition is just so stiff. And then finally in the bottom here, we have the DS2 or Dark Souls 2 tier which is just that, Dark Souls 2. I know we said we will go chronologically, and we will, but we're gonna start here. 
a lot of the community does not like Dark Souls 2. It's almost universally bashed as FromSoft's worst in the series and is definitely the black sheep. And that's why I've actually never played it. <laughs> it's the only one. This is the only one that I haven't played. And mainly because, yeah, everyone says it sucks. So why would I waste my time or money? This is infamously the only game not directed by the legendary Miyazaki. So it makes sense how this one would feel off. And you know, sure, there are some people out there that say, well, Dark Souls 2 really isn't that bad. It's actually decent. But with so many great games on this list, why would I really even risk playing something that could be bad when I know there's just fantastic games here? So I just want to preface that, yes, I've never played Dark Souls 2 and I might never. So I can't really give my own opinions on it, but the majority of people do agree that it's just not to the caliber of FromSoft's other games. So we're gonna go ahead and just place it in its own tier at the bottom here. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. All right, now we will go chronologically, starting with the OG granddaddy, Demon Souls. Now, I've only played the remake, but from what I can tell, it's very faithful to the original, just with some quality of life updates and shiny new graphics. And I did really enjoy my time with Demon Souls. I think it's good, but for me, it's only really sitting at C tier. You know, I just do not like how the difficulty of Demon Souls lies within the world and level and not with the bosses. For some people, this might really feel fresh and different, and it, it is, but one thing I really enjoy out of Souls games are the memorable and amazing boss fights. Part of that is because you spend so much time with them due to their difficulty. In Demon Souls, there are some difficult ones down the road, looking at you, Flame Lurker. But for the most part, the bosses are pretty damn easy. They do have some cool visual design, but when I clap them first try, I just move on with my life so quickly. Now the world and getting to the bosses is where the challenge lies in Demon's Souls. Levels and the normal enemies can be hard as hell and overwhelm you. To me, this just seems backwards. I'm sure there is a reason why FromSoft changed this difficulty structure after Demon Souls and never really looked back. I'm also not a fan of the healing mechanics where you have to use herbs that you have to either buy or find out in the world. There is no replenishable flask, so this adds both a different challenge in managing your souls but can make the game easier if you abuse it properly. Now, there are still a lot of things about Demon Souls that I think are great, like the open-ended world design and kind of the visual mystique. It's a very unique game, and you gotta respect it for being the OG. However, just personally, after playing through it once, I'll probably never play it again, so it's going to sit pretty at C tier. Which again, C tier is good, it's decent, just relative to FromSoft's other titles, it's one of my least favorites. Alrighty, next we have 2011's Dark Souls. If Demon Souls is the grandfather, then Dark Souls 1 is the fucking daddy. <laughs> daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Demon Souls invented the formula, Dark Souls perfected it, and essentially popularized it. Dark Souls really is the one that kind of blew the fuck up. For me, Dark Souls 1 is a very high A tier. Now, I played Dark Souls 1 later in my Souls career. I don't want to spoil yet right where I jumped in, but Dark Souls 1 was not the first Souls game that I played. Even so, playing it later on, it was still fantastic. The bosses are just simply iconic. Ornstein and Smo. The bell gargoyles, that one motherfucker in the hallway. <laughs> I played Dark Souls 1 quite a long time ago, and a lot of these fights are still burned into my brain. Dark Souls 1 is arguably the most challenging, too. It's very difficult. The level design, legendary. You know, sure, the challenge between checkpoints isn't quite as crazy as Demon Souls, but it's still damn hard. Nothing hits quite right as reaching the next bonfire with zero flasks and shit in your pants. Dark Souls also kind of created the level design philosophy that not only Souls-like games are known for, but has also bled into other genres with maze-like interconnected areas and unlockable shortcuts and intricate secrets and cool stuff like that. However, there is a lot of unfair, cheesy bullshit in Dark Souls 1. Yes, you want Souls games to be challenging, but you need that challenge to feel fair. 
ES1 has a lot of that annoying, frustrating challenge, and a lot of its design is understandably dated. So that's what really holds it back from being an S tier for me. Even still, Dark Souls 1 just truly perfected the formula we all love today and pushed the series to create the community that we have today. And for that, Dark Souls 1, I salute you proudly in A tier. You know, creating this tier list has actually made me want to go back and play this and damn, I just might. FromSoft's next release was actually Dark Souls 2, but we already discussed that. So let's just take a moment of silence for Dark Souls 2 sitting down here. <laughs> Anywho, next is 2015's Bloodborne. I mentioned earlier in this video that I actually just played and beat Bloodborne for the first time, so I do have some opinions. Bloodborne is a lot of people's favorite FromSoft game. Hell, even favorite game of all time. Personally, I really enjoyed Bloodborne. I think it's quite good, but relative to FromSoft's other games, it's, it's in B tier for me in B tier. And I think this is the opinion that I might get absolutely destroyed with, but it very much could be that I played it nine years after its release, so I felt its age a lot more than most, and also wasn't a part of that initial release hype. But you know, th this is my tier list, so it's my opinion, so deal with it. <laughs> Let me go ahead and be a bit more objective here. Why do I think Bloodborne isn't my favorite. When I see a lot of people sing the praises of Bloodborne, one thing that is very commonly applauded is the art and aesthetic. A lot of fans love the Victorian style city and clothing and the Lovecraftian enemies. I will say that does make Bloodborne very unique and stand out amongst its peers on the list. However, this just really isn't my jam. Yeah, I thought it was cool and unique, but I didn't love it. I just personally prefer the knights and the armor and the more medieval themes of Dark Souls and Elden Ring. To me, the tall and dangly character models of Bloodborne just kind of look dorky. Again, this is just my personal opinion and preference. Bloodborne also gets a lot of praise for its combat, specifically the rally mechanic where if you are hit, you can have a small window to regen that health by doing damage to an enemy. This rewards very fast and aggressive gameplay. Now, I actually very much enjoyed this part because I like to play aggressively in Souls games a lot of the time to my detriment. <laughs> but then Bloodborne also ditches the flasks and brings back finite healing items similar to Demon Souls. I wasn't a huge fan of this because honestly, Bloodborne is kinda easy, at least, you know, relative to its peers. Being able to have 20 plus blood vials for healing as well as health regen through the rally mechanic, if you play aggressively and aren't afraid to skirt out and heal, you can take a lot of punishment. I know I just bagged on Bloodborne a lot, but I want to stress that I did really enjoy my time with it. I think it's a great, incredibly unique experience. The bosses and combat are fantastic. There just were a few things that aren't my favorite and just didn't really gel with me. I do have a lot to say about Bloodborne, but we won't go any further. Maybe I'll make a whole video to really sink my teeth into it. But for me, Bloodborne sits in B tier. All right, now we are at 2016's Dark Souls 3. This one was tough for me because this is the first Souls-like game that I played. This is where I entered the fray in about 2017 and thought, hey, everyone seems to be enjoying these Souls games, so let me go ahead and give it a shot. And boy, did I learn quick. I got absolutely spanked. <laughs> So there's a lot of nostalgia here, but looking back on it now after playing Dark Souls 1 and like Elden Ring, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3, while a great game, didn't do quite enough to push the genre forward. So because of that, it's also going to go in B tier. It's a great game. It has a lot of great and memorable bosses. It has great memorable locations. It has a great variety of weapons and builds. Like, I remember fighting the Abyss Watchers for the first time and seeing that second one come out and start helping you or walking up the steps of Anne Orlando to fight Aldrich. Like, these moments were all fantastic. But I can't really just bring a specific reason to propel it any further. Like, I don't know if I would ever go back and play Dark Souls 3 now. I have more of a reason to play Dark Souls 1 or even Bloodborne over Dark Souls 3. If someone were to come to me and they just say, I want your basic vanilla Souls experience that is still great, but doesn't do anything crazy, I'd honestly point them at Dark Souls 3. 
it just doesn't quite do enough in my opinion still a fantastic game and it was a great first game to jump into but yeah there's just i don't know if i'd ever go back and play it it's it's good though we're actually gonna move it behind bloodborne because i do think bloodborne has a slight edge on it for just being a bit more unique okay 2019's sekiro Whew. now this this ladies and gentlemen this is a fucking masterpiece easy s tier i love sekiro easily one of my top games of all time i haven't played it for quite some time actually i think since right before elden ring to kind of get me in the mood but just thinking about it makes me want to go play it again sekiro is extremely challenging in all the right ways it demands that you master its unique and interesting combat mechanics it's a much more narrow and focused experience as it doesn't really offer much in the realm of builds but what it does it does perfectly i think it's the best pure combat in any game period just everything about sekiro meshes with my taste in souls games the setting is much more my cup of tea than say bloodborne feudal japan with katanas and dudes in huge samurai armor like it's so badass and and it does really stand out in the series there's just really nothing bad i can say about sekiro it's very unique. It introduced postures and staggering as well as deflections. Hell, it was even the first Souls game to dabble in some stealth, which although this did make it slightly easier, you could not stealth your way out of every encounter. There are a lot of memorable and badass boss fights from the Headless Ape to the goddamn Ishin Sword Saint. I think Ishin Sword Saint is single-handedly the boss that I have died the most to out of any Souls-like game ever but damn did i love every second of it none of it felt cheap i just i love sekiro and honestly it might be my favorite on the list maybe we'll have to see but because of that instant s tier now on to big boy 2022's elden ring In a lot of ways, Elden Ring is the complete opposite of Sekiro. It widened its scope by not only becoming open world, but offering an insane amount of build variety, and it really embraced RPG mechanics. But it does all of this with such beauty and grace. And because of that, Elden Ring gets an S tier for me. I love Elden Ring. Sure, it's not as tight and focused as Sekiro, but it gives you this massive, interesting, and beautiful open world to play in. It has so many cool weapons and abilities and just insane build diversity. It truly is a Souls player's sandbox. And just because Elden Ring does widen its focus, it does not sacrifice any of the tight and challenging combat that the series is known for. No, it actually introduces more elements into that, like the Ashes of War and Viable Magic. How Elden Ring and FromSoft pulled this off is nothing short of a miracle, and it's a goddamn masterpiece. Yes, there are some minor gripes with repetitive dungeons and bosses, but that is to kind of be expected with an open world this size. And although, yes, sure, some of it is repetitive you're just doing every single little thing on the map my point being is that there's plenty of interesting and unique content here more than any souls game before it i wish i could play elden ring for the first time again because every time i thought this game was just done surprising me i'd turn a corner and unveil a new part of the map or some secret and just be completely amazed the major bosses too almost all bangers there's a lot of very memorable ones here souls game will usually have a good amount of misses but elden ring hits more often than i thought it would and i'm personally not a fan of fromsoft's kind of abstract style of storytelling however in elden ring they do kind of reel that in a bit and the story is actually good relative to their other titles there are actually a good amount of memorable characters here elden ring easy S tier. The gripes are just so minor that the insane size and quality of the game just grinds them into dust. All right, and for funsies, because I loved this game so much, and I think 
It's from soft quality. We have our special guest tonight, Lies of P developed by NeoWiz. You know, I had tried other Souls-like games outside of FromSoft and I could never get into them because no one really does it like FromSoft. That is until Lies of P. This game almost feels criminal in how similar they copied FromSoft's style, even like down to the UI, but damn, do they do it good. For me, Lies of P is an easy A tier. It takes almost all the best parts of what FromSoft has done and kind of smashes it all into one game and it works surprisingly great. Personally, I think the story is what really makes Lies of P stand out here with not only being based upon a children's tale, Pinocchio, but also it is coherently told unlike the abstract method of storytelling that FromSoft is known for, which again, just really isn't my cup of tea. The combat is super tight and varied with parry mechanics, deflection, changeable arms, all the Sekiro, and then a bit of health regen from Bloodborne. Lies of P just really smashes a lot of FromSoft's ideas together, and it still really surprises me how well they pulled it off. The bosses in Lies of P are also fantastic. The graphics are great, and the music, oh god, the music, geez, it's awesome. I feel good. People rave about Bloodborne's world and atmosphere and aesthetic, and Lies of P is kind of similar with a lot of Victorian era inspiration, but for me, Lies of P does it better. Sure, maybe that's because it's newer and looks better, but yeah, like the music is way better in Lies of P than Bloodborne, and I think the combat's a little better. Yeah, this is a hot take for sure, and you know, don't hate me for this. Again, we're all having fun here, but I like Lies of P more than Bloodborne. Better story, better combat, more build variety. Now, maybe the world is a bit more interesting in Bloodborne, but it's close. The way Liza P was able to twist a children's story was really cool. And again, before I get chewed out in the comments, I do really like Bloodborne too. It's a great game. This is just personal preference. So Liza P, it's fantastic and sits easily at a high A tier. The only reason I really can't give it an S is because I was bummed that it didn't have like multiplayer and it doesn't do quite enough original to, I think, call it a masterpiece. It didn't really shake up the genre in any crazy way. I am extremely excited to see what NeoWiz does next. It's probably going to be like a Wizard of Oz game where you play as Dorothy, so it'd be pretty cool. All right, so in conclusion, yes, we have our tier list here. My two favorites are Sekiro and Elden Ring. I just love both these games and they're very different with one being a focused experience with very minimal RPG elements and the other being a very wide one with lots of RPG elements. So it is interesting that these are my top two, but they both do what they do just perfectly, in my opinion. If I had to pick one, I'd probably give it to Elder Ring with just how much content there is. And I'm sure Shadow of the Earth Tree is going to be great and expand on the world even further. Again, A and B are both great games. All of these are great. I know a lot of people really love Bloodborne and I really enjoyed it as well, but it just didn't quite resonate with me as hard as it does with some other folks. And it probably a lot of it is because I played later, you know, Lies of Peace better to me because yeah, you know, it's a eight year older game. So, hey, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, you know. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below which FromSoft game is your favorite. Dark Souls 2, anyone? Seriously, if it is, let me know and maybe I will consider giving it a shot. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'll definitely be covering more Souls-like in the future and of course, we'll be covering Shadow of the Erd Tree in June. Thanks again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.